Hi y'all, I am comfortable in my sexy woman pajamas in my wonderful bed being a happy single woman ready to present you with another list. Look at my mood ring. This list is things I learned from my abusive ex-husband. Now I know you're looking at this title and you're thinking, what the fuck, Jules? How could you possibly learn anything from a narcissistic abusive psychopath? Eh, just give me a chance and hear me out. How many of you have seen the videos that I have done about things that we can learn from these toxic ass men? That's basically where my mind went when compiling this list. So let's go through it. Let me know what you think about each one. Number one, I learned that men are not natural providers. This is a myth from the pits of hell. As we have seen repeatedly, as we have seen in statistics, as we have seen when women become ill and their husbands divorce them for someone younger, men are not natural providers. And we've also learned that men are afraid of other men. The only people that men will protect are themselves and other men. Now, wait a minute, I know what you're thinking. I'm married and my husband protects me. My father protects me. That's another thing. Men only protect what they own. You, in some way, are of service to them. If you're their wife, you're cooking for them, you're cleaning for them, you're taking care of their children, you're providing sex to them, at the very least. And if you are their child, well, you're seen as an extension of themselves. It's kind of like a dog being protective over its bone. That, you see what I'm saying? Number two, men are not natural providers. In a perfect world, you know, everybody would be able to take care of themselves. Families would help each other out. It would be an even playing field. But in the world of white supremacy and patriarchy, we have been beaten into this idea that there's a leader and a provider of the home and the sweet little wife stays home ironing his pants. And there are men who honestly can't handle that role. It's too much for them. But society's like, hey, dude, this is what you're supposed to be doing. So they get frustrated and they take that shit out on their families. There were several times when I was married to my abusive ex-husband when he would get so frustrated and say, I can't believe I have to take care of you for the rest of my life. What the fuck? As black people, our ancestors didn't do this patriarchal bullshit. Okay, so if you're in my comments preaching to me about submission and how the man should lead, you've been drinking the Kool-Aid, my dear. You have been drinking the Kool-Aid. And because of who made that Kool-Aid, there ain't even enough sugar in it for it to be enjoyable. Number three, people will take advantage of perceived innocence. You gotta let folks know that you ain't the one. My ex-husband would always comment about the fact that I was so nice and sweet and innocent. He was, I think, six or seven years older than me when we met. I was 20 and he was 26 or 27. And now looking back, I understand why those qualities were so important to him. He used me. He used me to his advantage in every way imaginable. We as women have to stop wanting to portray this image that we are just so nice and loving and sweet and kind. I have noticed throughout my life that the only people who really ever called me mean or bitchy or rude were the people who were trying to take advantage of me and disrespect me and cross my boundaries and I put my foot down and that pissed them off. I am fine with somebody thinking I'm a bitch or rude. That's okay with me, but you know what you're not gonna do? Disrespect me. I win. I don't want to be perceived as nice and sweet and innocent. I want to be perceived as don't fuck with her. In hard times, it is imperative that you focus on what's important. Look at that. I meant to say that you focus. I can't even type y'all. What the hell? Y'all get what I'm saying, right? Y'all aren't those type of people who corrects people on their English and their grammar all the time. Please tell me that we're friends. Okay, back to the back to the list. When times were stressful, my ex-husband focused on getting out of those hard times. <laughs> Hell, even if it meant treating me like shit. Now, what we can take from that is when we're going through shit, we don't, we should not be dating. <laughs> we should not be out here in the streets. I'm sorry. Way too many people got stuff going on and they're out here filling the void and trying to pass time thinking that they need to be focused on finding the one. Now, 
I'm not saying that only rich people can date. That would be fucking dumb. But I'm saying, if you are going through a financial crisis right now, you need not be swiping left and right on a dating app. That should be the least of your worries. Getting your life in order should be top priority right now. If you're going through a crisis with your family or your kids, that should be top priority, not whether or not you should go on a coffee date or a dinner date. If men got some shit going on, they will break the fuck up with you in order to figure that shit out. Even when they're lying about going through a hard time, they will break up with you. But we want to balance every play. We have to have a man so bad that we will put on the back burner very important things that we need to be focusing on getting sorted out just so we can chase around some guy. That need not be the case, honey. It needn't be the case. Number five, keep asking till someone says yes. Now I met my ex-husband in Arkansas and he had like a rough childhood. No, I'm not telling you guys this to feel bad for him or to make excuses for his bullshit. Just follow me here. He had to do a lot of hustling to get by in his life. Um, so we would get apartments that we didn't make enough money for, um, that we couldn't afford. He would get jobs that um, he was not qualified for, all by talking to the right people, all by going a step ahead the person who's telling him no. These guys do not respect authority, okay? So if you don't give them what they want, they're going to find a way to get it. Sometimes to our detriment, unfortunately. But the positive thing that we can take from that as women, we cannot back down. I hate to say this, but sometimes you got to ask for the manager. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you got to call corporate. Sometimes you got to be the one to leave the Yelp review. Okay. Sometimes you got to make the phone call and send the email. If you need something, you cannot just be like, oh, you said no. Well, okay. No, I have gotten so far in my life by having that same mindset. I have gotten so many opportunities and so much help at times in my life when I really needed it, just by refusing to accept somebody telling me that something can't be done or hearing the word no. Because there's some things in life that I'm definitely gonna do. That's win, that's survive, that's be successful, that's do what I gotta do, that's make sure my kids are taken care of. And you're not gonna tell me I can't do those things. Number six, leave when something is no longer serving you. These men will dump you and act like you don't exist and they don't care what you have done for them. They don't care what you have going on. They don't care how many kids you have by them. They don't care how cute you look. They don't care about anything or anyone. Once they are sick of you, they are done. But we wanna linger and we wanna understand and we wanna work things out. We wanna talk. We waste so much time with all these talks and all this understanding. The situation, whatever that is, it doesn't even have to be a romantic relationship. It's not working out. Time is up. Move on. That's how a lot of these men, as terrible as they are, that's how they're able to sleep at night because when they're done, they don't give a fuck anymore. That's it. But we stress ourselves out, stress ourselves into a mental breakdown, worrying about people and situations that ain't worrying about us, not benefiting us in no way. And we got to stop that. Number seven, fake it till you make it. There were lots of things, like I said in a previous uh, example on this list, that my ex-husband did not qualify for. He did not earn. But because he's a narcissist and charismatic, he could trick people into thinking that he was overqualified. And, and he was amazing. And he was this great, trustworthy person. He was hanging out with company bigwigs and all this shit. There is no reason for us as women to have imposter syndrome ever because most of these men, about 99.99% of them are not qualified for any of the shit that they're doing. But they learned the verbiage. They learned who to talk to and then they get where they want to be. That mindset has also helped me get very far in life. All those jobs that say you got to have experience before you can get in. Yeah, I was getting those jobs when I had no experience, which helped me gain experience and things that I needed to gain experience in. Does that make sense? 
Anyway, I hope this list was entertaining, me sharing another part of my life with you and things that helped me grow up a lot when I was young and dumb. Tell me some lessons that you guys learned when you were young that have helped you now.